Ooh, I should not be drinking this so late. I'm gonna be wired. It's really good though, especially because it was free 99. Hey loves, it's your favorite blind chick back on your screen with another one. I've got a treat for you. Today is a story time dating while blind. I know you guys are gonna love this story. I've told a couple family and friends and they've got a good laugh out of it. So I hope that you do too. If you do, you know what to do, hit the like button. But before we get into it, consider the story time part two. Part one is gonna be a PSA for all of you living with vision loss. Is a mess dating while blind. Call a spade a spade, dating in general. I don't even have words. If you know, you know. If you don't, consider yourself blessed. But one thing I know for certain, two things I know for sure, is whenever you guys DM me or message about dating while losing vision, there are a lot of things we all have in common. Whether we're dipping our toe in the dating pool or we've been with someone for a long time and hope to be in a lifelong partnership with them, we all have the same concern. How much should I share? I even asked you on the gram a couple weeks back via the polls, what should I do with the hinge boys? Should I be telling them in the profile off rip, first message, first date, or let them find out on their own? And would you believe the first one won by a landslide? When I scrolled, I saw a lot of familiar faces and names of people who are not visually impaired. Found that funny since you will never know what it's like to reveal that you're visually impaired if you're not visually impaired it is something that at times i was ashamed of thank god i'm not anymore a lot of you have shared with me in the comment section or in the dms which by the way paragraphs on paragraphs on paragraphs how you guys do that you're blind i don't know how you have it but i try to respond but it takes a lot of time so in future please just leave it in the comment section below it's easier for me to zoom and respond to you guys just so you know but a lot of times when you guys reach out to me about dating while blind, it's always about comfort and sharing. And I, I say the same thing every time. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. When I put it on my Tinder profile many years ago, we'll not go on Tinder again. That's a swamp. One thing I noticed is that 20 guys a day would be asking me about being legally blind. I'm not professor blind over here. There's so many other things I want to talk about. And yes, it's a big part of my life but I'm not here to teach you, you know what I'm saying? It's up to you if you wanna share right away or let it happen more naturally. It's kind of what I said during the Working While Blind video, it's up to your discretion. Sometimes you wanna say because your visual acuity is that far gone that it's best so they know how to help you. Sometimes you wanna keep it private because you don't even know how to process it yet, but wherever you're at, whatever end of the spectrum, whatever stage or phase, know it's up to you what you wanna share and you're never wrong in what you do. It's not like, having a child and not sharing that. I think when you lose vision, it's something that's very, <sighs> I don't wanna say it's rare, cause there's a lot more visually impaired people out there, but it's something that a lot of people can't relate to. Before I get too philosophical with it, just know you gotta come correct and come with confidence. It's so important to know your worth and your value. In full transparency, in my past relationships, there were times that I didn't speak up or share how I felt or confide because I didn't wanna be that vulnerable because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. And you never wanna get into that place because that's where you don't get to really connect and commit with that person. So take it from me, just do whatever you wanna do authentically. Without further ado, let's get into the story time. Grab a drink, grab a snack, it's a long one. I hope you get a laugh. So this one begins a couple weeks ago. We went on no one but two dates. The second one was a whole disaster. But what had happened was, he messaged me one day and we've been talking for months because I'm kind of bad with Hinge. A couple guys have made a comment that I'm hardly on there and it's true. I'm on there at best a week, at worst sometimes every three weeks. And this one guy was saying, hey, I'm gonna delete my app, so if you wanna meet up, here's my number. I thought that was either A, bold or smooth to try to get me off of the app and maybe into messaging, which will be more regular. So I took the bait, I messaged him. We had some pleasantries, hi, how are you? Then he went in for the kill, when are you free? I thought, woo, I got an eager one on me. So I said Thursday or Friday, because it was enough days out in the week to give me time to process since I never met anyone off of this app in real life. On Wednesday, he confirmed with me, sent me a screenshot of the weather at work, which of course said that it was scheduled to rain. I said, 
Well, we're gonna have to get a, li a literal rain check. On Wednesday, he confirmed with me that we were still good for Thursday. I said, yes, let's go on a picnic or maybe get a coffee. Our city wasn't open yet, so it wasn't like we had patios as an option. And I wasn't really comfortable going to his or having him at mine. So he said, let's go for sushi since you were talking about it a couple weeks ago. I said, sure, especially if the weather's good. He sent me a screenshot of the weather network of course it was scheduled to rain the only day of the week i figured let's do a literal rain check if anything he said let's wait until we'll see how the day turns out on the day of we had confirmed 7 7 30 6 45 get a text message from him hey i'm parked at this random intersection that wasn't where his house is what's your addy i was confused i was looking around like Ooh. when did i agree that we were meeting here Hold up, rewind, skirt, skirt. I scrolled up just to make sure. Like, did I give did I give him the impression that we I'm confused. I read all the messages. Nowhere, anywhere did I say, come to mine. I'm hosting here. Order and then bring it here. No. I said, let's get a coffee. He's like, I'll grab it on the way. I don't know this guy from a can of paint. I'm not trying to have him up in my place. So I called up my girl Nadine. I'm like, hey, is this strange? Am I tripping or is this how it is? She's like, I don't know. I've been in a relationship forever. But what I would say is tell him to park near yours. Go on a walk. If it rains and it's a bad date, perfect excuse to leave. If it's a good date, you can bring him back to yours and you can order sushi. I said, huh, oh, that's true. She's like, that way you can feel him out. And if you really don't want to have him in your house, just walk. You like to walk. I said, that's true. I text him back saying, let's just go for a coffee and a walk. I just want to enjoy the sun. And if it rains, we'll go from there. He said, perfect, anything. I just want to see you. I thought that was so sweet. So anyway, he comes, he parks in visitor parking. I give the super all of his deets and we go on a walk. He opens all the doors. We get coffee. We walk for hours. We talk about everything under the sun. It's a good vibe. And he didn't catfish me. We get back here. We're saying our goodbyes. He asked me out on another date. I say yes. And then he's like, oh wait, before I go home, I really need to use a washroom. The coffee ran through me and I had a liter of water before I met you. Is there a washroom on your lobby? I said, no, but there is one in the laundry room. So I walk him over. He looks, oh wow, your laundry room is so nice. I say, yeah, they just renovated it. As soon as I said renovated, I jiggied the door. Either A, they locked it up because of the cocoa, Two, that ain't a washroom no more. So I said, hmm. should I be the one that's super savage and sends him on his way because I don't want him up in my place? Or do I trust him enough to come up real quick and use the washroom? So me being little nice girl, lets him up, but I ain't a fool. So when he came and he went in the washroom, I came around here real quick, top drawer, knife out on the countertop. Because listen, I might have watched way too many crime movies, but if they catch you in your house, they'll never find out who it is because your DNA is everywhere. So I said, I got my protection because you ain't expecting me to come through with the knife. So I'm standing right here. <laughs> I'm standing right here. He comes out of the washroom and he comes over here and he's like, so how long have you been on Hinge? And I said, I don't know, about three months, but I had it a couple years ago. He's like, oh, you had it a couple years ago? Why did you delete it? I'm like, the guys were acting really weird. Weird in what way? And I started looking over the knife, like, do I really need to jiggy this guy up? Why is he asking me these questions? Like, we already scheduled another day. He needs to go. I said, they were just weird, and I like inch closer over here, but he can't see what I'm looking at. Then he's like, oh, haha, -ha, well, last time I went out with someone, I got catfished, so I'm so glad that you were everything you said you were. Am I what you thought I was? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, the vibe was so good. Are you thinking about deleting the app? No. He's like, I just feel like there was such a connection between us and we're meeting up later this week. I just got back on the app. I want to see things, you know, keep my options open. Yes, the vibe was good between us, but it was just a first date. So after that comment, I'm like, mm, homeboy's got to go. So I kindly edged him out. And even on the way out, he was still talking by the door. And then when he went, sigh of relief. I don't know if I'm rusty or if that was just coming on too strong, but I'm canceling the next date. We'll wait a week because I need to put a speed bump in this situation. He's coming a little too strong and too fast for me. The next day comes and I cancel, but I give him the option of Friday or Saturday the next week. He agrees to Saturday. Fast forward, that's the day that I went to the beach on the island. And if you watch the vlogs, you know the mission it took. It was an hour and 45 minutes for the water taxi alone. I let him know though, hey, it's taking me forever and a half to get to the island. Do you want a rain check? 
because I don't want to keep you waiting. Then he let me know he was OT and that it was all good. So I said, perfect. On the way back, it was still a long wait. I think it was 45 minutes to an hour 15. My friend's like, oh, you're going to be late for your date. I said, shoot. So I messaged him again. I said, I don't want to keep you waiting. He's like, it's all good. I'm just chilling at home. Let me know. I said, okay, Mr. Adamant. I didn't say that, but in my head. When I got home, I was going to text him, I'm home. But then I didn't. I just figured with the vibe this guy's been giving me, let me just give myself a buffer. And thank God I did. I jumped in the shower. I refreshed my curls. I freshened up, got clean. You know, if you're a beach bum, you just want to feel refreshed when you come home, especially if you're going to meet someone for the second time. I even gave myself a minute to get rehydrated because I was well parched. And then I hit him with the I'm home text message to see what he would say. And as I suspected, when I hit him with the I'm home message, I'll be there in 15 minutes. It's like, thank God I gave myself that time. Otherwise, I'd be scrambling to pick an outfit to shower quick or I would have to tell him to wait a minute. We're on date number two. We're driving. He suggests sushi since we never got it the first time. I say, okay, cool. He drives to his favorite sushi spot. It's closed. He tries spot number two. It's closed. It just closed 20 minutes ago. I apologize because if I hadn't been late, we might have made it. At this point, we're driving around. We go to a plaza in my old neighborhood. He suggests subway. I say, no, no, no. Right next to it is a burrito spot. I say, okay, I'm always down for... Mexican. He says, great. I love Mexican too. He's hungry. We get out of the car. He doesn't even take two steps. This happens in slow-mo. You can't make this ish up. He turns around and says, I forgot my wallet waiting for you to text me. Do you want to get this now e-trans for you? Now I would have believed him if I hadn't heard a million stories about Tinder, Hinge, Bumble dates, where the guy conveniently forgets his wallet and the girl has to pay. I sit in my head, how convenient is that? Do I want to be the sassy one that forgot her wallet at the beach and see what he says? Or do I want to pay? I mean, after it all, truth be told, I was going to offer to pay since I felt bad for being late. I just thought it was weird that he made up this excuse. I think it was an excuse. You let me know if you feel the same way too. We're in line at the burrito spot. There's a couple of people ahead of us. And it just so happens the girl right in front of me is not just ordering for herself, but three people who were texting her intermittently. So that takes a little bit of time. He's complaining the whole time. There's four people on the other side of the counter scrambling, flipping their wrists. They're doing their best to keep up. At one point, he's like, how long does it take? How hard is it to make a burrito bowl, a burrito, a taco? And I just say, do you hear that? He says, yeah. That iPad is probably chiming with DoorDash, Skip the Dishes, and Uber Eats. So it's not just what you see here. Plus, they wouldn't have four people working behind there if it wasn't busy. I'm just so hungry though. I'm not, I, I don't need to be impressed, trust me. But at the same time, this is a second date. You should be on your best behavior. Impatient, noted. Even when I pay, I'm thinking maybe he's going to use the time to ask what the amount is so you can e-transfer me. doesn't ask anything, keeps complaining. At one point, I just say, hey, I was waiting all day to get to the island and back. This is a walk in the park for me. This is light work. He's like, oh yeah, that's true. We laughed about it. He seemed cool for a bit. When our burritos were up, the guy hesitated a little bit and he made a really snide comment. He said, how hard is it to get a burrito right? Which I just thought was unnecessary. I'd rather someone double check to make sure they're putting the right thing in the bag than put it in with confidence because you're giving them attitude. That just, that comment wasn't necessary and I just, mm, maybe I just a little too sensitive because I've been in the industry for so long. We get back in the car, we head to his. I let three of my friends know and turn my location on just because I wanted to be safe versus sorry. We get to his, shoes off, hands washed. That's just how I do before the cocoa, during the cocoa, forever. It's just hygiene to me. He takes off his shoes. I'm waiting for him to come in the washroom after me or maybe hear that he's washing his hands in the kitchen. Crickets. I was confused. I said, hygiene is N for needs improvement. I found out later that he has a washroom in his bedroom, so maybe, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. We sit down at the dining table, we're having good conversation, the burritos are really good, so good that he who denies the situation and just inhales half of it. At one point he comes up for air. Oh, I'm so thirsty, this is so spicy. Only then did I realize he never offered me a drink. He said in the first date, oh, it's the French in me. Is that too much to go for sushi on a first date? 
Where's your French mannerisms now? Is it too much to offer a girl water? I'm thinking he's gonna go into the kitchen, grab us both a glass of water. Nope. Instead of going to the kitchen two steps away, he walks to his bedroom, which is a lot further away, comes out with a sports bottle of water. I'm thinking maybe there's a situation with the roommates because when I was washing my hands, I looked to the left, I looked to the right. There was no toilet paper to be found, no towels. The only thing that was in there was soap. I'm like, who lives here? To the point where you have two roommates that are probably scourging everything in their room. This is giving me all types of weird, but whatever, let me not judge. This is why I live alone, okay? So he comes out, doesn't bring me water, doesn't bring me Evian straight from the French Alps, just brings himself water, chugs it, we finish our burritos. You wanna sit on the couch? Uh, do you wanna let food settle a little bit? Maybe it's a Caribbean saying to let your food settle, but growing up, my mom always said to sit for a bit, just chill. You don't gotta get up and play or go or whatever it is right after you ate. Plus, we're having a whole conversation. So in a couple of minutes after that, we migrate to the couch. I'm sitting where I wanna sit because I can sit close enough to see him, but I'm not trying to cuddle up and give him the wrong impression. After all, the vibe is just not there at this point. And more importantly, I don't wanna put myself in a, condition in his domain to give him the wrong impression if you know what I mean so I'm sitting where I'm sitting at one point he gets up to show me all of his cross frit props I'm thinking okay <laughs> he's really enthusiastic about this he sits down we start talking about the world being closed and our jobs and whatever out of nowhere show me your favorite yoga pose you can't make this ish up I said no <laughs> he says what about pigeon pose i said one i am wearing jeans i just ate and that's very inappropriate plus pigeon pose i don't really want to be putting my belly over my shin like that like we could do yoga on another date he's like oh okay true 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 i just figured pigeon pose or downward dog i'm not gonna bust it worldwide in your living room what do you think this is it was so weird so from there and just like weird vibes and he's like you want to sit closer i said no this time I didn't even explain. I just said no, because I'm like, I'm not trying to give you the wrong impression. It's not even like we have liquor in the mix to get mixed signals. Just no, just no. After that, I just say, you know what? It's my time. I'm so tired. You know, the sun really burnt me up, which wasn't a lie. You know, when you're in the sun for a long time, you get tired in a different type of way. So I just said, this is my perfect out. He got up. He's like, I'll drive you home. One redeeming quality of the night. On the way home, he felt really comfortable sharing with me that he's scamming his roomies. So when we were there, one roommate came in, said good evening. The second one, we were Casper the ghost. He didn't see us, didn't acknowledge us nothing. I thought that was strange, but considering everything I've seen, this is just normal at this point. When we're driving home, he says the first roommate is cool. He found them both off Kijiji. They have strict house rules that he made up. They can't come in the living room, which is why all of his props are all over the place. That living room is only his space, his words. That explains why everything is probably stored in his bedroom too and there's nothing in the washroom. Then he continues to tell me how the lease is not even in his name, his friend's name, because if it was in his name, it'd be $600 more. And the way he's charging his roommates, they don't know that he's getting such a good deal. Okay, I get it. We live in an expensive city. The hustle's real. Please don't share this ish with me on the second date. That's just making me feel all types of comfortable, uncomfortable. It's the scamming for me. Why you gotta be so sketchy? So after that, if I didn't know, I knew then. When he rolled up to my apartment, I said, oh shoot, before I forget, do you wanna e-trans me right now to see what he said? I had already decided in my mind after that story that I was never seeing the money again and at the end of the day, it's fine. He said, Oh, yeah, yeah, send me your email and I'll send it to you later. I said, oh, really? Usually when I do e-transfers with my friends, we just do it on a text tip. I know because the bubbles went blue in the message that you could probably do Apple Pay. Or if you forgot your wallet and you saw it when you went to your room, you could have paid me there. So you could skip with the line, but okay, save face. So I put my mask on before I reached in for a hug so he knew he wasn't getting up peck. I came up to my unit. I said, before I go to sleep, Here's my email address. The next morning, oh, I was so tired. I fell asleep. How's your day? I said, it's good. We talked a little bit. A couple days pass. He said, oh, are you free Wednesday or Thursday? I said, no, I'm not free those days, but maybe later on in the week. But hey, I was looking at, I didn't see the e-transfer. Were you able to send it to me? Now I'm just being petty. 
He said, no, the week has been so busy, but I'll give it to you. Are you free on Friday? I left him on red. To me, your word means nothing. It's not about the money. It's the principle of it all. Don't say you're going to do something and then you don't because, hey, I don't know you from a can of paint. And with everything else you shared and you said, this is no love loss for me. So that was my story time. I hope you got a good laugh out of it. I definitely did. I mean, it made for a good video, right? If you had a situation like this, let a girl know down below because I'm sure I'm not the only one. And as always, thanks so much for tuning in and making it to the end of this one. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up button, share, subscribe, all that stuff to show you care. And until next week, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.